And I just wanted to share how uh, someone came up to us Sunday afternoon and said how blessed she was and how yeah. you really minister. So I'm like going with the flow. Let's talk about unmet expectations because there's so many people who, when they file for divorce, they say their expectations are met. They're not, they're not giving them what they need. How should one look at that? How should a couple look at that? Hello and welcome to Right Decisions. I am Dr. Tammy Moore Johnson. It is always my pleasure to come to your homes weekly with a show that is created to provide tools for success. We hear people talking about mindsets and using this buzzword as it pertains to growth mindset or prosperity mindset. But did you know that mindsets can be the number one deterrent to living a spiritual abundant life? Today, we're discussing mindsets. What are mindsets? What does the Bible say about mindsets? And how are mindsets developed and how do we change them? Special guest and partner, Elder Nehemiah Johnson, is back to discuss this topic with me. Welcome, Nehemiah. Always my pleasure. And you know what? It's my pleasure, too. <laughs> you don't know how much of a blessing it is to be able to converse with you mm on air about things that we talk about at home and, and people see how deep and how God's blessed you with special revelation. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have something to. <laughs> well, praise the Father. We're talking about mindsets today. Mindsets. And mindsets can be a deterrent to living that abundant life that the Father will want us to live. I say can be because you can have some good mindsets. Mm -hmm. You know, the Father mm -hmm. tells us to to have the mind of Christ. That's right, that's right. So let me start with defining what mindsets are. Mm -hmm. When I looked it up, mindsets is defined as um, the established set of attitudes. And I love that word attitudes, right? Mm -hmm. So mindsets, that's, that was from a particular a resource. Then you have another um, definition that talk about um, mindsets can be thinking or feeling. You're thinking and feeling to the point where it impacts people's behavior. So when we look at attitudes, that's going to that's gonna determine how people are going to behave. That's right. That's right. Absolutely right. And you can also toss in there, in addition to what you said, beliefs. Mm -hmm. What a person really believes. All those things determine and really indicate what a person's mindset really is. Mm -hmm. And when we think about attitudes, it's really a subtle way of people, how they're feeling and how they think. And like we said before, when they have those mindsets established over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do today is to kind of examine some mindsets of some people in the Bible. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, what comes to my mind right now, I, I think of David. David. Right. Because what David did, you know, he had, uh, David is known for, of course, having a heart after God. That's right. That's right. But at the same time, he refused to um, punish Absalom. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, it was only not that son of his. Now, Absalom was his son. Absalom killed his other son mm -hmm. because that son had raped his half sister. That's right? right. So he has two sons, mm -hmm. Abaddon. Mm -hmm. who is murdered by Absalom. That's right. Now, the reason why Absalom murdered Abaddon, Abnon, I'm, 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 I want to make sure kind I'm pronouncing it right. Kind of a tongue twister, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the dad, David, didn't do anything. That's right. Absolutely right. Because David was a father and he was a king. And as mm -hmm. a king, he's supposed to have justice. That's right. But he did not do that with his children. So I'm looking at this pattern, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's a mindset mm -hmm. towards his children. And it could be a stronghold. And at the end, it end up hurting himself. That's right. That's right. Well, you look at it, uh, King, King David, he is actually representing the governing and ruling authority in the land. That's right. Again, he's representing the governing and ruling authority in the land. So he sets the tone, sets the pace, or sets the example mm -hmm. uh, by what he does. It's going to impact the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But in this case, since he did not take action against Absalom for what he did, then that mindset, as you say, it caused some destruction in David's very own house because mm -hmm. he did not address it. But yes, his mindset and how he handled that or his inaction 
from what he did is actually indicating his mindset, as you say. Mm -hmm. And when um, the father gave me that about David, it reminded me that sometimes we have people who have that mindset nowadays, mm -hmm. that their children take precedence over everything else. Or they, you know, we want them to be uh, a priority, but That's not right. to the point where you're hurting yourself. That's right. Because no one should have that place in your heart but God. So he, he went against truly what was established, what he was supposed to have done with God's plan. That's right. Absolutely. He was supposed that that mindset actually is led to sin. Mm -hmm. It was deeper sin. It was further sin. So again, because it was inaction because of his mindset, then it caused his house to be disrupted. And of course, when we talk about his house, we're not just talking about the dwelling that he has right. in. It's talking about his family. It's talking about the house of David, period. Mm -hmm. It actually, really, the mindset is an indication of the sin that he allowed to go in, in the land. And we know it's documented in the Bible because of his inaction due to his mindset, the trouble that he caused mm -hmm. for his house as well as the kingdom down the road. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Would not, and even at the end, and, and in case the viewers don't really know the story, mm -hmm. but he refused to have Absalom, who who um, planned to have him dethroned. I mean, he wanted to take over, over yes. his kingdom. Yes, But he said still, he told them, don't hurt, don't kill him. That's right. Wow. That's right. That was a stronghold. Mm -hmm. And see, Nehemiah, sometimes I look at mindset. It can be, if it's negative, it can be a stronghold. It truly can. It can be a, it can be a stronghold. And it eventually, uh, you can start by letting things go, but somewhere down the road, as we we're talking about with David, somewhere down the road is going to be consequences or repercussions mm -hmm. to allowing something to continue on. And uh, sometimes I like to use the word, it festers mm -hmm. until it actually hits the surface all at once. Mm -hmm. And David, as you were talking about, is a perfect example mm -hmm. that how the mindset that he had eventually caused him to actually flee from his very own mm -hmm. son, mm -hmm. his entire, his household. It caused him to flee from that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. So what causes mindsets? Mm -hmm. how, how, how are they developed? Mm -hmm. Everyone has a mindset. Really, truly, it's but the things that we are being exposed to, our personal experiences. It could be something within the culture, uh, something we've learned. All of those things mm -hmm. attribute to us developing a mindset. But as you know, God tells us to set our mind, to set our minds on things above, not mm -hmm. on things in this earth. But we know that the mind is like a sponge. It's going to yes. soak up whatever is whatever the liquid that is exposed to. It's going to soak it up. Mm -hmm. So the mind is already there, planned and purposed by God to actually receive the things, hopefully the things of the kingdom of God. But if not, then it's actually going to take in what is actually exposed to. And you said that the culture, because it's exposed mm -hmm. to it. So can you give us an example? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, today's example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at, uh, say, the ideologies in the world, mm -hmm. it could be capitalism, or white supremacy, um, even Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. uh, all those particular things it is, is that when it's the forefront in any particular culture, whatever you're exposed to is going to be a part of your own mind. Mm -hmm. You're going to take it in. You're going to operate by that particular mindset. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they could be opposite of what God says as it relates to his kingdom. Mm, because we good. can, yes, absolutely. We can have things in uh, exposed to an ideology or things in the culture that over a period of time, it seems like it is absolutely normal to operate. Fine. And we yeah. think it's fine to operate that way. But when it's in opposite. Fact, when in fact, it is actually opposite or even op opposite opposing the things what God has said concerning this kingdom. Mm, that. That is worth, like you say, that's worth repeating again. Mm. So we can have things in the culture mm -hmm. that we think is normal, but it's really, it is the opposite of what God says in his kingdom. That's right. Absolutely. Because we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. We can't say that enough. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we don't realize this, you realize that images, images, mm -hmm. what we hear, those things are shaping us. Well stated, well put, mm -hmm. because God talks about, he lets us know we are created in his image after his likeness. Mm -hmm. So Satan, who is not an opponent to God, but Satan actually creates an image 
or images that are trying to counter what we have in our very own mind and what God has said. Mm. And those very things that he tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, cast down yes. those images in every high thing that could exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So when you're talking about images and what we have in our mind, we have to make sure if we take inventory of our own thinking, we'll be surprised that we can have images there that actually determine what our mindsets are. We are most likely following those images as opposed to what God has said in his very own word. Isn't that something? Following those images. Mm -hmm. So you did talk about you know, uh, racism. You, mm -hmm. you did some of the bigger categories. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about something that from day to day, mm -hmm. you know, your, you know, your typical layman or your, um, you might have a teenager. Mm -hmm. What are some examples that we can say that that's forming a mindset? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, when we believe in certain things, I know quite often we talk about sickness, but there are many other things to that. But when you look at, you think about education, the whole educational process, the institution of education, if we take a look at it and measure that or weigh that against the Word of God, we see some of the things, or quite all, quite uh, not, a lot of the things that we get in the educational system are really not lining up with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about education, is that if you are in the kingdom of God, then you are supposed to train up a child in the way that he should go. That's right. And part of that training up a child in the way he should go as a parent then you're looking at that child, you're examining that child, and you see what gifts and talents that he or she has in him. And therefore, we have the responsibility to make sure we put them in environments, mm. safe environments that will actually nurture and cultivate those gifts. But what do we do? Uh, unbeknownst to often, sometimes we, uh, we put them in school systems that are really opposite or really opposing to what we should be training up and teaching our children. And then they can get it not only from school systems, mm -hmm. but they can also get it from, you know, again, what they watch on TV, mm -hmm. what they watch on YouTube, what what are they filling their minds That's with? Right. Absolutely so what right. we have to do, and we talked about this before, because mm -hmm. we can't get away with it. The only way that you're going to renew your mind mm -hmm. is by getting in the word of God. That's so right. require them mm -hmm. to read the Bible, spend time with God. And so we can take on his image. That's praise right. the father. That's right. So you know what? I'm going to take a quick break and we're going to pick it up right here. We'll be right back. The School Leadership Institute featuring Principal Kefele is designed to tailor to principal's needs and will be held in Charlotte, North Carolina, July 2023. Buy your special price ticket before February 11th. For more information, go to the School Leadership Institute 2023.eventbrite.com. Is, is my school a better school because mm. I'm here? See, mm -hmm. so now what what spawns out of that is just a just just a wealth of conversation in terms of your leadership identity, your 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 leadership presence, your leadership impact, your leadership mission, your leadership purpose, your leadership vision, and your leadership value. So there, there, there's so much there, and it's 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 really again it's an it's an infinite discussion in terms of reaching this this bottom line do i matter does my presence in this school make a difference for the lives of the children and staff that i lead we look forward to seeing you in charlotte north carolina july 2023 welcome back to right decisions we're discussing mindsets today. Nehemiah, before mm -hmm. the break, we were going into how with mindsets that we can't get away with renewing our mind to change a mindset, I should say. Mm -hmm. We have to get into 
the Word of God That's right. in order to renew our mind. There's no so, way around it. So even though you may have a young person, a teenager, mm -hmm. what have you, that might be seeing these things on YouTube, they might be hanging out with friends who have a different belief, but if they're getting into that Word, it's washing That's right. that person's That's right. That's mind. Right. You like that expression? Yeah, I expression. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so... What are some other ways that mm -hmm. one can change um, his or her mindset? Mm -hmm. The beginning, as you already said, it tells us, Paul writes in his letters to the church at Ephesus, chapter 4 in Ephesians, he mm -hmm. says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm -hmm. Again, he says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm -hmm. So being renewed in the spirit of your mind is that you have to, you've already said it, you can't say it enough, mm -hmm. that it begins with the reading of God's word. The reading of God's word is totally different from any other books that are written by man. That's right. So in all the books that are written by man, you can almost say they are dead letters. Why do I say they're like dead letters? Because Christ made a statement. He says, the words that I speak they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. Christ has already said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. So when we're reading the Bible, it's not just dead letters. It is words that are living. Mm -hmm. So when we take that word that is living and we bring it into our minds with the understanding that my mind is supposed to be a spiritual instrument for God's use. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like the world, the mind of the natural man. It's the mind of me, I'm in a part of the body of Christ. So when I'm reading his word, I'm looking for the life that's living and something that is active. So when I begin to read that word I'll, and meditate on the word of God, what I'm actually doing is actually, like you've already said, eliminating or purging those things that are already in my mm -hmm. mind, purging out all the error mm -hmm. from my mind as I continue to read the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because again, it is living and it is active. Mm -hmm. So that spiritual instrument begins to bring on the life of Christ that is intended to be, and it's nowhere around it. I must be reading that word, studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God to make sure that my mind becomes a spiritual instrument for God's youth. As you've already mentioned, he tells us that let this mind that is in Christ be also in you. Mm -hmm. Let this mind that is in Christ be also in you. Can I have the mind of Christ? Which tells me right there, I can also have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I have the mind of Christ as I look to Christ as being the living example. Of course, he's not, he's not living in bodily form today, but yes, he's on the inside of me. And the more my mind is actually renewed, I'm tapping into that living Christ, that Christ that is inside of me. Mm -hmm. That's some good stuff right mm -hmm. there, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, when you mentioned <laughs> Ephesians 4, it reminded me of Romans 8. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's Romans 8, 4, which, which it actually says in the English Standard Version to set your, like you said, set your mind on Christ. But it mm -hmm. also said that if you set your mind on the flesh, that it end, it'll end up in death. Mm -hmm. And it actually said the word set. That's right. In your mind. That's right. And so when we talk about things of the flesh, and see, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Mm -hmm. The enemy yes. knows this. Of course. So when we're yes. talking about exposures, um, when we say the culture, images, mm -hmm. this and that, he's trying to keep you away, keep people away from knowing who they are in Christ. That's right. So that we can have the mind of Christ, because if we have our mind set on the flesh, it's going to end mm -hmm. up in death. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Mm. That's right. The carnal mind is set on is set on the flesh, but the spiritual mind is is tells us that it's set on life. That's it, on life. The spiritual yes. mind is set on and life. And who's life? Mm. Who is the life? Well, Christ is the Amen. life. He says he Amen. is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The more we understand who we are, even beyond salvation. Salvation is the first beginning. It is the free gift of God. But beyond that. What am I doing to make sure that my mind is being renewed in the spirit? Being renewed in the spirit, I further solidify my relationship with mm -hmm. God. And Christ is the ultimate example of that. Mm -hmm. I can live in this earth today just like Christ lived because the word tells me mm -hmm. so. And it's beginning mm -hmm. with my understanding who I am. That's right. Who I am. He says that I am his son. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a son of God, I have an inheritance that he's already given me. Mm -hmm. That inheritance is not like the way the world understands. It's not about money. 
in anything of the sort. The inheritance is I am in fellowship and in communion with God himself. Mm. Now, that's hard for people, some to believe. I don't want to cancel anything out, but yes, I'm in fellowship with God. I'm in communion, with, in God communion with, God with God through his mm-hmm. son, Jesus Christ. And that's by understanding the word and living the word out. Because once I actually receive salvation, the word tells me that the Holy Spirit seals my spirit. Mm -hmm. And it lets me know at that particular time, eternal life has already begun for me. That's right. Eternal life has already begun. We've been taught and may have the understanding that eternal life, that is something that happens after we die and pass on. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. The truth of the matter is, is that once I receive salvation, sealed by the Holy Spirit, I, at that moment, am experiencing the beginning of eternal life here and now. But, you know, I think a lot of Mm -hmm. people realize that, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I've stepped to Christ as my personal Savior. Yes. But there's a a deeper peace Mm -hmm. than just that. I'm not trying to minimize that. Of course not. That's the beginning. Absolutely. But to take on the mind of Christ— It's you have to mm-hmm. repent. Yes. So so let's go back. When they get saved, they're they're repenting. Mm-hmm. So it's changing the way you think. Yes. Right? They come into revelation mm-hmm. that Christ died for them. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for, for my sins. Yes. I'm turning away. I'm changing that. I'm coming to reality who he is and what he's done reality. for me. Reality. That's right. Yes. Reality. reality. Yes. What he's done for me. Yes. And so then I become saved. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the same thing that happens when we realize that mm-hmm. the there could be a stronghold or a way of thinking that mm-hmm. does not line up with the word of God. Mm-hmm, so what we have to do at that point is when we come into that reality, mm-hmm. that that's revelation, right. That's right. That's right. then we change that yes. and we don't go back to it. That's right. Absolutely right. You know, it's interesting what you said is that um, uh, beyond salvation, we have an understanding of Jesus. But Beyond that understanding of Jesus, we have to understand lordship. Mm, now, that's good. Lordship. lordship. That's absolutely. Good. Yes. Absolutely. Jesus Christ, Lord of my life. Once my mind becomes renewed in the spirit, then I have understanding he is the Lord over my life because it is not my life. Mm-hmm. It is not my life. It is the Christ who lives within me. Mm-hmm. That's his life. So once I make him Lord of my life, that's when I'm actually walking in the relationship he said I can walk in, I'm walking in the manner in which he said I walk, and it will be evident to others mm, in this world by how I conduct my affairs, conduct my early, conduct all of my affairs, conduct my manner of life, will be evident to all who actually see him. That you have Christ mindset, that, that basically. You took, said, you've ab- taken on the mind absolute, of Christ, so absolutely. that will be evident. It absolutely. Will be, it will be evident. It will be so evidence. before we get too far in that, let me go back to say, because when we talk about repentance, which is changing the way you think, mm-hmm. that's the same thing about mindset, which yes. is a pattern of thinking, mm-hmm. which can sometimes be said as a stronghold as well. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about the negative mindsets. We're not talking about the positive mindsets. Yes. You have the one that you may have of Christ. Yes. But let's give them an example. Mm-hmm. You know, you can pull from the New Testament, if you like, okay. of someone that may have had a mindset in the in the Bible. Another example, I should say, because we talked of David. Mm-hmm. But this time, feel free to use a New Testament of someone who had a mindset. And, and let's look at that and examine that. Okay? okay, absolutely. John chapter 3 tells the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a ruler of the Pharisees. It says he goes to Jesus by night. Mm -hmm. He goes to Jesus by night. And he says, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God because no man can do the things that you have done. Mm -hmm. And they have this dialogue, if you will. And Jesus says to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And he goes in another place that except a man be born of water and of the spirit, He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. See and enter. Again, see and enter is talking about your mind. Okay. It's nothing to do with your physical sight. That's good. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the mind. Has your mind 
been renewed spiritually. So now that you can see the kingdom, and once you see the kingdom, you can now enter into the kingdom. It will be, if everyone had the understanding, they will realize that the kingdom is here and now. We're not waiting for anything to come, Mm -hmm. except the return of Christ, of course. (laughs) But uh, I want to make sure we're clear on that. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about seeing the kingdom of God, it is here and now. It is right in front of us. But have we renewed our mind to the point where we have spiritual understanding? When I have spiritual understanding with a renewed mind, then I can see the things that are of God and I can see the mm-hmm. kingdom that is in operation here and now. Here and now. Because here and he now. wants us to have, you know, yes. when we say what is known as the Lord's Prayer, yes. mm-hmm. we want his will to be done on in earth yes. as it is in heaven. In earth, and so as that's it is the kingdom heaven. here. Absolutely. What mindset did Nicodemus have? He has the mindset of a Pharisee. Mm-hmm. So if, when he says he's the ruler of the Pharisees, it's indicating a mindset that he is having. Yep, yep. But he, it was something about him. He had to go see Jesus for himself. So that mindset that he has, because even Jesus later on said, you call yourself a ruler of the Jews and hmm. you cannot understand spiritual things. It's to the point that we more do we understand the word, because I hear oftentimes people say when they study the word that it's hard to read and hard to understand. The more your mind is renewed by the spirit, that we understand that what you're reading is a language of the kingdom of heaven. That's it. That's it right there. The more your mind is renewed mm-hmm. and you purge out the things of the world and the world system, then those, that language that is in the word of God, the true unadulterated word of God, that is the language of the kingdom. Fully renewed mind means that those things that are error, I've purged them out because of the word. Those things that are not of truth, renewed in the spirit of mind, means I have actually eliminated that thinking. Mm -hmm. That's why it tells us that I can live just like Jesus did Mm -hmm. here and now. I know I'm repeating myself, but with emphasis, we can live like Jesus did here and now. You know, that's going to have to be a note that is we that end on. I know it goes by so fast, mm-hmm. but what we can do is extend to our, our viewers that mm-hmm. if they want to catch more of this, to catch us on YouTube mm-hmm. at Right Decisions with Tammy. Thank you, Nehemiah, for sitting on the set. Absolutely. Renewing our minds with the Word of God is the beginning of changing negative mindsets. It is the Father's will that we take on the mind of Christ. In order for us to change our attitudes, beliefs, and ways of thinking, we must have a personal encounter with God where His Word becomes spirit and life to us. It is our objective of right decisions to provide you with tools and strategies so that you can be all that God has created you to be and you can make right decisions. However, there's no right decisions without the making the best and ultimate decision of all times. That is making Jesus Christ your Lord. If you do not know the Lord, why don't you make Jesus Lord of your life today and invite him into your heart? Just simply believe with your heart that Jesus died for your sins, repent of your sins, and confess out loud Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, when Jesus returns, you'll be able to join him. Thank you for tuning in to Right Decisions, a show with a positive message. If you'd like to contact me, email me at tools to make right decisions at gmail.com. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye for now. Thank you for joining me after the show. We were discussing mindsets on right decisions. So we're going to continue our conversation now. Nehemiah, during the broadcast, Mm -hmm. we talked about Nicodemus. Nicodemus. And I want you to pick it up from there because Mm -hmm. you were getting into it, how Nicodemus had a certain mindset. Yes, absolutely. And how the Father wants us to align our, our thoughts and minds with his thoughts in mind. Oh, absolutely. Nicodemus had a mindset of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. It's interesting if we pay attention or take inventory of our own minds, my language is an indication of what my mindset is. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak on a daily basis, my interaction with other people is going to really be evidence of my mindset. The language that I speak is going to identify whether I'm I'm actually fully in the kingdom of God Mm -hmm. or am I actually straddling the kingdom of God, and the world. Can, can we stay right there for a minute? Mm-hmm. Because you said the language that you that a person used mm-hmm. can't indicate whether they're in the kingdom 
mm-hmm. or of this world. It's always and you know indicate. I'm reminded of mm-hmm. um, Smith Wiggles. Wigglesworth. 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 That's mm-hmm. right. Smith Wigglesworth. He was very cautious of mm-hmm. being kingdom minded. That's right. Even to the point where he wouldn't allow worldly things in his in his house. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like he was very careful about reading the news. He was very careful about right. who he had as friends to mm-hmm. allow in his life, in his into his home, mm-hmm. and into his life because he realized that what people say can influence you, what you read can influence you. So he always was uh, cognizant of that. That's right. Everything that is said, everything that is vocalized. Is looking for a place to land. To land, yes, say that. Everything that is said, everything that is vocalized, is looking for a landing spot. Mm -hmm. It's either going to land in one or two places, Mm. in my mind or in my heart. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And people use the word heart and mind somewhat interchangeably, and it can be to a certain degree. But understanding that the Bible said is that it talks about the heart and the mind. It tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence. With all diligence That's right. For out of it flows the issues, issues of life. life. Mm. So what does that mean? My heart is really my subconscious. Mm-hmm. And what's in my subconscious, I actually is springing forth each and every day. Mm-hmm. So that's why you hear people, even the kingdom, talk about the troubles that they hear and see in this world mm. because they allow certain things in their subconscious and that's what they speak. Mm. For instance, if Christ would come along, oh, this is an example. It just came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes we talk about ghettos. Let's just say ghettos. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And when a person goes in a ghetto, they may describe what they see. Mm-hmm. But Christ would come along. He would not even say ghetto. It would not even That's enter right. in his mind, That's much right. less come from his mouth. Mm-hmm. He would look at it the same thing that someone else sees, and he would say, the fields are white for harvest. Mm-hmm. That's how he would look at it. But if my subconscious has been actually trained to look at certain things and call it what the world sees, Mm -hmm. then that is an indication that my mind is not set totally on the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Christ would walk through the same area, the same area that someone called a ghetto, and he would say, the fields are white for harvest. That's what my mind should be. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of, I heard a pastor say that, the the way some, when your mindset or your mind is of Christ, mm-hmm. it's easy to believe or expect the blind to see. Mm-hmm. You know, to the point where they go overseas and mm-hmm. and they had a number of people to That's to right. be able to see that were blind. Yes, that then they start chasing and looking for wow. people to be blind because their mindset has changed to be the kingdom That's because right. they believe that hey, God's going to heal. Versus, right. you know, I'm not saying that mm-hmm. a mindset. So it's a difference between, okay, I believe in a miracle mm-hmm. versus I know this is what we can expect every time. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. You see the difference? Imagine if I'm sitting down and reading in the Bible where it talks about Jesus provided healing, miraculously provided a sight to the blind. If I'm a man with sight and uh, my mind is not totally spiritually renewed, if I read that same scripture because I have physical sight, then I'm thinking, well, he cannot be talking about me. Mm. Mm. Think about mm-hmm. it. If I'm reading that, well, Jesus heals the the blind man, and I'm reading the blind about the blind man, and if I have physical sight, immediately I'm thinking that he's not talking about me. Mm-hmm. But on a higher level, if I have spiritual understanding, I, I would ask myself, though I have physical sight, I'm not blind physically, but could I be blind in my mind, that I missed the things of right. God. But I was actually talking yeah. about physically blind yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. So you went yeah. to there with yeah. that scripture about absolutely. someone blind with their mind yeah. Yeah. also needing to be able yes. to see. Absolutely. absolutely. I got you. Typically, we do that because when there's an ailment or a lack in the physical body, because we feel it, that's where we want our healing to come first. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, what we need is spiritual healing first. Mm-hmm. Spiritual healing first in our mind will cause a healing in our bodies. Amen. That's true. Say that again. Like you said, that's <laughs> worth repeating. It is in our bodies where we feel physical ailments mm-hmm. and sickness and things. That's why the world system can make merchandise out of somebody in the kingdom of God. Because the world understands if you have a pain or illness or something in your body, because you feel it in your body, that's where you desire it the most. You want relief. But just because you get healed doesn't mean your mind is is renewed spiritually. Mm -hmm. However, 
If we were to seek spiritual healing first in our minds, then we would see a healing and manifest a healing in our body. Because what's in the body, in the mind, is going to manifest in the body. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because you have that, your mind is now lined up with the kingdom of God. You know that healing is yours. This is just an example with healing. But as you said, it's other things as well. And once you know that that... You have this. God has already yes. done everything for you to have yes. it. Then everything else has to come in line. So everything healing with that too. Yes. I think absolutely. I'm going to end on that note. This I, has been yes. good. I appreciate that uh, you sit a little bit longer so we can talk about <laughs> uh, the mindsets on the after show. Mm-hmm. Thank you for tuning in.